In the last tutorial we built an outhouse for MSTS. In this tutorial we're going to take it a step further and build a complete locomotive that we're going to export after we've textured it and see if it works in MSTS. And I think after you've completed this tutorial you'll be, you'll be happily imbued with the knowledge that it takes to build anything you want for MSTS and any sort of locomotive you want with a bit of practice. What you see here is some measurements that I've taken from a drawing I found online and I've just written down the main points about the locomotive and I've also found that if I load that drawing up into an editor like uh, Photoshop or what I use is, is Paint Shop Pro 10 I can use the selection tool to make measurements on the drawing itself and and then I can find out more information. Now what you do there is find out a measurement that's actually shown and use the selection tool to measure that part of the drawing and find out how many pixels that is and that'll show up in the bottom taskbar of the, uh, editing, the uh, image editing software that you're using and then you can use that as a factor to relate back to millimeters. It's not vitally important where you start building from, but logically I guess you would start building from the ground up and that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. I'm going to start with the wheels, axles and the bogey construction and we're going to go from there. So start off by selecting your construction panel and drag and drop a cylinder onto the scene. You might notice that I have the wireframe selected here, the wireframe mode, and that's because you can see the internal axis of the cylinder. And that'll be important when we use the shift operation to turn the cylinder on its side. And it's important that we can see that axis, as you'll see later on. What we can see here is the, the cylinder is facing the wrong way on the Z axis, we need to rotate it 90 degrees to the left or right in order to get it to sit like a wheel would. Now we, to do this we need to use the shift selection tool which is in the tool operations menu and you can use that there and to right click on that and to set up the properties that we need. Then when you click on that it will rotate that cylinder within its frame and that is important because it also rotates the origin of the object to be um, in line with the global origins. If we right click on the shift operation tool we can see the parameters for that tool. Now these will come into effect when we press the button to enact that operation. Now we don't need to sit any others, all we want to do is rotate about the z-axis 90 degrees and that's set and we're right to go. Now clicking on that button performs the operation as we expected. You'll notice that the axis hasn't changed, just the frame for the object has rotated. So the uh, game will think that that object is pointing the right way, which is the main thing. If you didn't use the shift operation tool and just rotated it using the axis or typing into the properties window, the axis would change and during the game that wheel would rotate like a coin flipping over, which is not what we want. We can put back on the, the full view now and what we're going to do now is scale this cylinder to look more like a proper locomotive wheel. We go to scale by to size and we enter in the measurements that we have got off our data and the X will be 0.05 which is the thickness of the wheel and for the height of the wheel which is the overall diameter we'll put in 102 and 102 for the other so that that looks more like a locomotive wheel 
and you can see that it's much better. You may notice that the object, the wheel, sits slightly embedded into the grid. And that's because in Canvas, the objects are default one by one by one meter when you drag the primitive onto the grid. And we've resized the wheel to be 1.02 meters uh, high and wide. But we haven't affected its its position yet, and that's going to mean it's it's still positioned as though it was one meter by one meter by one meter. And if we go to the properties, we can see that the Y position is still 0.05, which would mean it's centered and sitting right on the ground if the object was still one meter high. But we need to change that and add 0.025 to it to get it to sit exactly on the ground. That's, that's all we need to do and everything will, will work properly then. Now check it out and everything looks exactly right. Now what we're going to do is make a copy of this wheel and then make an axle and we're going to combine those three things, the two wheels and the axle, into one object that we can use to make all the wheels and axles for the locomotive and that will save us some time. Now the first step is to copy this wheel and what you can do is just select the wheel and press Control c Then you click somewhere else and press Control v And the wheel will appear in the middle of the scene on the grid. What we need to then do is position the wheel properly based on where the other wheel is and the distance between them of 1485 millimeters. To get these wheels in the correct relationship position wise we can work out where this wheel is and then make some calculations but what I'm going to do is move this wheel centrally on the grid to the origin which will give it a position of 000, zero, zero. And then we can work from there, and then once we have the wheels and axle combined, I'll center those and work from there. It's easier if you keep working centrally, and that's the way we're going to continue for the rest of the model. We'll right click on the first wheel and give it the group position of 0 0.525 for its height and 0 for the Z. Then on the other wheel, we'll do the same for the X, but we don't know where that is yet, so we'll just leave that. That will have to be a specific position. Give it the height of 0.525 and the Z of zero. So it'll be sitting on the edge of the grid. And we see the wheels are lined up along the Z and on the Y for the height, they're both sitting on the grid, which is what we need.